Hi, this is Matt, and welcome to another new video from BradleySiderograph.com. And in this video, we're going to talk about the upcoming Bradley Sitter Graph turn date on June 21st, 2017, which has a power of 100 out of 100. Before we go too far, I would like to emphasize that this video is simply for educational purposes, so please keep in mind that past performance is obviously no guarantee of future results. Any results that we talk about in this video might not be typical. And this video is obviously for educational purposes only, and it contains no financial, legal, or other advice. So please consult your own professional advisors to inform your own personal decisions. Okay, over here we see a graph of the S&P 500 and a graph of the bradley sedera graph indicator. So the bradley sedera graph is this green line that you see right here. And then this blue line, this right here, is the S&P 500. And you can see that so far for 2017, the two have had a relatively high correlation. They both bottomed at approximately the same time. They both had you know, a peak and a little bit of weakness over here. And then they're coming toward what could be a top at the end of June of 2017. So let's take a look at this. Let's look at this turn date in a little bit more depth. The bradley sedera graph itself, it has 36 possible planetary pairs, such as Mercury and Pluto, Mercury and Neptune, and so on and so forth. And there are also five possible planetary aspects. So you have conjunction, sextile, square, trine, and opposition. So this gives us 180 possible planetary aspects that could be taking place on June 21st. So it's simply the 36 possible planetary pairs times the five major planetary aspects. So of these 180 possible aspects that we could have between the various planetary pairs, only 23 of those are active as of June 21st, 2017. So we're going to take a look at that. We're going to find out what's going on with those 23 active planetary aspects on June 21st, 2017. So on this slide here, you can see which ones are active. So you can see that we have some conjunction, sextile, square, trine, and opposition aspects. And you can see which planetary pairs are involved in each of those. Over here on the right, all this is showing is the exactness of the aspect. So think of it as, if the value is 100, that means that it's an exact aspect. And if the value is 0, obviously the aspect is not taking place at all. So for example, if you look up here where it says conjunction, you can see that there's a conjunction between the Sun and Mercury that's exact on June 21st, 2017. So it's 100%, which means that that aspect is exact. However, if you come to the, an aspect uh, such as this down here, you can see that an opposition between the Sun and Saturn, the aspect is exact on June 15th, 2017. However, the aspect is has substantially gone away by you know, early July 2017 because you see a 0% right here. So this is simply trying to show you which aspects are active, which aspects are taking place around this June 21st turn date. And one thing that we're going to take into account later in this video is the, this column right here, which contains the actual historical correlations. So if you're somewhat familiar with the bradley sedera graph, you might know that all sextiles and trines are assumed to be positive, and all square and opposition aspects are assumed to be negative as far as the stock market. So the idea is that the more sextile and trine aspects that take place, the stronger investors might feel about the future prospects for the stock market, and we might experience some stock market strength. Whereas if we have a lot of square and opposition aspects that are taking place at the same time, that's when investors might get a little bit more bearish according to the bradley sedera graph. However, over here in the far left column, what you're going to see is the actual historical correlation for each of these planetary aspects with the S&P 500. So from the time period 1950 through 2014, you can see the actual historical correlation of each of these aspects with the S&P 500. And the reason why I think this is important is because sometimes the assumption that's made by the bradley sedera graph doesn't necessarily you know, turn out to be the exact case in reality. So for example, for sextiles, you can see that even though the bradley sedera graph typically sees these as being positive, as leading investors to become more bullish, if you look at these values over here, you can see that the market actually has experienced weakness when we had sextile aspects. In contrast, if you come over here to the opposition aspects, you can see that the market has actually had some strength. We've actually seen the S&P 500 perform relatively well when we've had opposition aspects take place that you see right here. So that's why I think it's important to take into account the actual historical correlations. Okay, so over here, we're looking at the 23 planetary aspects in a little bit more detail, including the actual historical correlation of each of these aspects with the S&P 500. 
And what you see here in these two columns, you see the exactness on June 21st. So the column that says 621, it simply means on June 21st, how exact is the aspect? And then this column to the right of it, where it says t plus 10, this is saying 10 days later, how exact is the aspect? And the idea is that if you see it decreasing, that means that the aspect is going away. Whereas if it's increasing, that means that the aspect is increasing. So let's take this one for example. So it says conjunction between Sun and Mercury. And it shows that that's an exact aspect. It shows 100% for June 21st. However, 10 days later, it shows that the value is only 12%. So that means that the aspect was exact on June 21st, and it's basically going away 10 days later. So as a result, because it's decreasing, what we're trying to find out is, does this aspect fall into one of two categories? So the first category is, is it a decrease in a positive aspect? And the second one is, is it an increase in a negative aspect? So here's why we care about these two. So if you have a positive aspect, so if you have an aspect that has had a positive correlation with the S&P 500 historically, such as this one, the conjunction between Sun and Mercury actually has had a positive correlation with the S&P 500, which means that the S&P 500 has experienced some strength when this aspect is taking place. We would expect that if this aspect is becoming less exact, if it's going away, then we're basically losing that positive value. So the positivity that's associated with this aspect, it's going to be going away as we get further and further away from June 21st, because it's exact on June 21st, and then it's going down after June 21st. So this is an example of a situation where you have a decrease in a positive aspect. So that could be explaining a decrease that we could be seeing from the market. The second one is a possible increase in a negative aspect. So what we're talking about here is a situation such as this one right here. So a square aspect between the Sun and Jupiter. So that has historically had a negative correlation with the S&P 500. You might see the 1.7% right here. And you can see that the aspect is only exact 5% uh, on June 21st, which means that the aspect is its not really taking place on June 21st. It's, it's maybe getting ready to take place. However, 10 days later, you can see that the aspect's exactness is 85%, which means that the aspect is very, getting very, very close towards its maximum point. As far, and by maximum point, I mean a zero orb of aspect when the aspect is, is exact. So as a result, what you're seeing here is you're seeing a negative aspect that gets, that's getting stronger effectively. So that's something that could be leading towards you know, possible weakness in the market. So once again, the two categories that we're considering is a decrease in a positive aspect, so a positive aspect that's going away, or an increase in a negative aspect, so a negative aspect that's getting stronger over time. And you'll see a value in this column if it falls into one of those two categories. And then over here in the magnitude column, what this is trying to show is if you take the absolute value of the historical correlation and you multiply that by the absolute value of the change, how much could we expect to see from each of these as far as what, what's, the possible ask, what's the possible impact that we could expect to see from each of these? Because if the historical correlation is relatively small, then we wouldn't expect to necessarily see so much of a strong reaction. Uh, for example, if you have a historical correlation of 6.3% with Sun and Mars, that's obviously stronger than a you know negative 0.2% for Mercury and Uranus. So we're putting a greater weight towards the ones that have had a higher historical correlation and a lower one to the ones that have had a lower correlation. So when you multiply those out, you'll find that the four planetary aspects that appear to possibly be driving market weakness could be these four here. So it's basically a conjunction between Sun and Mercury, a square aspect between the Sun and Jupiter, a trine aspect between the Sun and Neptune, and an opposition between the Sun and Saturn. And you can see over here what those four values are. And also next to each of these, what we're showing is the date on which this aspect becomes exact. And you can see that three of the four are taking place on or after June 21st, and only one of them, this one, this one right here, this is taking place prior to the June 21st turn date. So these are four of the planetary aspects out of the 23 that appear to be especially significant. And the dates are, once again, June 21st, July 7th, July 7th, and then June 15th. And then toward the end of this video, we'll briefly do a recap of the key dates. So before we finish this video up, I'd like to talk to you about the Advanced Astro Indicator for the S&P 500 and what that is showing for 2017. And as far as does that indicator match up to what we're seeing with the bradley sedera graph, or is it showing something that's completely different? So here we'll see the Advanced Astro Indicator for the S&P 500 for 2015. 
and this is using all weights. So you do have the ability to customize the advanced ester indicator. So this is the one that if you use the drop down box, if you select the one that says all weights. So you can see that for 2015, there was what looks like a pretty strong correlation between the S&P 500 and the indicator. And the indicator took into account stock market values for the S&P 500 through December 31st, 2014. So we're going to ignore any correlation that we see before January 1st, 2015, because we use this data in our uh, determination of the indicator. So obviously we can't uh, use those values to determine how well the indicator is performing. Instead, we're looking from the January 1st, 2015 date forward to see how well the indicator is performing. Okay, so over here for 2016, we can see that there's also you know, relatively close correlations between you know, the S&P 500 and the Advanced Astro Indicator 2017. It also looks pretty good. And what we're seeing is it's a little bit of a delay. So if you think back to earlier in this video, we talked about how the bradley Sedar graph turn date is June 21st, 2017. Whereas for the Advanced Astro Indicator, you're seeing that it's showing a top around early to mid-July. So this right here is early July. That right there is late July. So the advanced aster indicator is also showing a top for the S&P 500 around the middle of this year. However, instead of it being at the end of June, it's more showing you know, the month of July as compared to you know, just the month of June. Um, so the two, I would say, are relatively aligned as far as their direction. Uh, but this one, the advanced aster indicator, is simply showing that there could be a delay beyond the June 21st turn date. Okay, so... This is the last slide in the video, so I just wanted to recap some of the key dates. So we have on June 15th, one of the key aspects that we talked about, so Sun, Opposition, Saturn. You have a top in the middle terms on June 20th. Then you have on June 21st, uh, Sun, Conjunct, Mercury, which is one of the four key planetary aspects that we talked about earlier in the video. June 21st is the actual turn date, the bradley Sedergraph turn date with a power of 100 out of 100. And then relatively soon thereafter, on June 30th, that's when you have a 100 out of 100 power declinations turn date. And then on July 7th, you have two aspects taking place, Sun square Jupiter and Sun trine Neptune, which are the aspects that we talked about earlier in the presentation that are taking place. But I would say overall, we do see some consistency between the advanced astro indicator and the bradley Sedar graph as far as you could say late June to late July is a time frame where we might start to look to see is the stock market experiencing some weakness. And obviously, I personally wouldn't take into account any one metric um, when I'm trying to take into account what's going on with the stock market. I personally would be interested in, you know, fundamental analysis, you know, technical analysis. You know, what do the technicals look like? Does it look like the market's topping, or are we seeing strong signals that this rally might have some legs and it might continue? So there are multiple factors that might come into a final decision as far as what could be happening with the market. But it is interesting that the bradley Sedar graph and the Advanced Astro Indicator are show showing something that's relatively consistent for 2017, which is a possible top between late June and late July of this year. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And for more information, please visit bradleysedarograph.com.